Britain would be the greatest, most successful economic power in the world if everything British was as successful as musicals. It did exactly the Thatcherite theory. Here come the cats. I think the clever thing about these shows is that they're not in the least bit parochial in the way that uh, most uh, kinds of theatre uh, are, so that you have no sense watching these shows that they are British. They don't tell you anything about the British condition. They're not like so many straight plays examining post-imperial decline or any of that kind of thing. You know, Cats is about cats. Starlight Express is a lot of fellas uh, scooting around on roller skates. Uh, Les Miserables is the great social novel. Uh, of all time, and uh, Phantom is some creepy guy living in the basement who, uh, who fancies the big uh, girl on stage. Well, those are things that can be understood in any kind of culture around the world. Uh, and you could say that uh, the clever thing about the way they're sold is that you're not aware of the flag that's flying on top of them. We sort of lucked on the scene with our shows at a time when the world shrank. Pushkin Street, Moscow. Cats hits its 15th city. Phantom of the Opera premiered in Melbourne last night. And it will be done at the same time as the Phantom of the Opera has premiered here in Stockholm. Britain's latest arrival on Broadway is going to do very nicely indeed. It has the reliability of uh, McDonald's. You know that if you go anywhere, if you, if you go into the uh, McDonald's in Ljubljana, or uh, the McDonald's in Addis Ababa, that a sausage and egg McMuffin is going to taste exactly uh, the same. Cameron McIntosh is, uh, without exception, the best marketer of uh, material anywhere in the world. He understands um, logo, um, image. He, he understands the, the, the language of advertisers. Cats logo or the Les Miserables logo are, in some respects, as familiar now as, as the Coca-Cola emblem. Uh, you know, musicals never had uh, logos before. You don't think of West Side Story and see a logo. You don't think of Oklahoma and see a logo. You, you, you think of them and you, you hum a tune. Was the first thing you think about of Les Miserables is that little urchin girl uh, who has sold a, a zillion T-shirts uh, and, and mugs and, uh, and all kinds of other paraphernalia. This is a terrific show. I cried. Brilliant. Excellent. Absolutely. Wonderful. Brilliant. You could go along to English first nights in the 1980s and they were full of all the most terrible people you'd ever want to be uh, sitting surrounded by. Uh, yet you got a kind of delicious frisson at the whole atmosphere of this thing, that there was so much money, you know, millions of pounds riding on a piece of piffle, and the piece of piffle had been expanded like some, uh, I I like some massive contract. It had been inflated into this glossy, shining bauble. And the very vulgarity of these shows did, I think, uh, sum, sum up uh, the, the mood of the 1980s far far more uh, than than any than any other uh, art form. I don't know what Mrs. Thatcher's musical uh, tastes are. When when she's asked uh, about her favourite uh, records or so forth, she she picks uh, you know the Beverly Sisters singing "How Much Is That Dog in the Window." That was her favourite <laughs> record apparently. So I don't know what you she thinks of Andrew Lloyd Webber musically, but I think she respects. Uh, the size of the uh, uh, of of what he's done. I, I don't think it's any coincidence that uh, that that Andrew uh, wrote the theme tune for the 1987 election. And now, music that Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote for the election campaign. It's rather noisy. It's called by the members of the party. It's great to be great. She was like a sort of uh, Lloyd Webber heroine from the Evita phase. Um, I think Margarita, as, uh, <laughs> as Private Eye called her in one sketch, you know, ten years in the West End. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Just as Thatcherism never has really taken root, I don't think 
we've really drawn the conclusions from what Cameron McIntosh and Andrew Lloyd Webber did. It's not commercial art. This is actually the stuff that Cameron McIntosh and Andrew Lloyd Webber like. And I think it was also um, seen elsewhere uh, in, in the 1980s. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the sort of popular classical thing with uh, Nigel Kennedy as uh, Four Seasons getting into the charts, I think that had less to do with Nigel Kennedy wearing a Colonel Gaddafi pillbox hat and more to do with the fact that, you know, Vivaldi, The Four Seasons, is a good sort of coffee table classic. And uh, similarly, if with the, the Pavarotti in the park thing, this idea that uh, a resurgence, if you like, of, of solid core middle brow culture. Thatcherism, as far as the arts was concerned, uh, should have had a, a wonderfully liberating effect. I mean, all these people loathe Mrs. Thatcher, and that should have been a wonderful thing to put in their plays and, to, uh, and, and, their, uh, and their other artistic adventures, like it did in you know, Eastern Europe, where people loathe the state, and it produced some very creative art. Instead, what happened was that they, it, it showed the, the, the sort of weakness of it. They just caved over the, the arts establishment in the face of her.